When you think about a 9mm self-defense gun, you automatically think of a subcompact polymer frame striker-fired pistol like those from Glock. But that's not your only option when it comes to self-defense. Some revolvers are chambered in 9mm that can do the job just as well. So why should you consider getting a revolver instead of a semi-auto? People usually think that revolvers are meant to be big and bulky, meant for cowboys and bear defense, not urban self-defense. It's partially true. There are massive revolvers that can drop bears and elephants alike, but there are also revolvers that are designed for concealed carry. Today, we'll look at the latter pack of revolvers and give you my recommendations. The Ruger SP-101 The Ruger SP-101 features a 2.25-inch barrel with a 1 in 16 rate of twist. You get 5 rounds in the cylinder, an integral rear sight, and a black ramp front. The frame is, of course, a satin stainless steel finish and the grip is black rubber. If the rubber is not to your liking, Ruger made it possible to change it out to something more your style. You also get three moon clips to help with reloading. The SB-101 is a bit on the heavy side, weighing 25 ounces. It's not too heavy to be impractical for concealed carry, but it will not be as comfortable as your typical Glock 19. Though it has a bit of heft, it is pretty compact. However, everybody who has owned it loves it. The only downside I can think of is the trigger pull. Yes, that is to be expected from a double action, but it feels quite long. The Ruger LCR Although Ruger had the SP-101 series of revolvers, there is a gap in their offering. They did not really have any lightweight and affordable concealed carry options. This is where the Ruger LCR comes in. They managed to keep manufacturing costs low thanks to the manufacturing process. Fun fact, some law enforcement officers carry the Ruger LCR as a backup piece should their main one be compromised in any way. Evidently, the Ruger LCR 9mm is a good option for self-defense. It weighs just 17.2 ounces and the 1.87 inch barrel makes the gun very compact. Without the exposed hammer, you can whip the gun out without snagging onto anything. The crisp trigger pull and ease of operation make the LCR a versatile platform for new shooters. The stainless steel cylinder has a PVD finish and a Hogue Tamer monogrips complete the build. You get three full moon clips with your purchase as well. All of that for only $600 MSRP. The Ruger LCR X. As the name implies, the LCR X is basically the LCR. You get the same stainless steel cylinder, the Hogue grip, and 1.87 inch barrel with a 1 in 16 rate of twist. The LCR X features a ramp, front sight, and an integral U-notch of the rear. One major difference between the LCR and LCR X is the external hammer on the ladder, which means you can operate the gun single action. This little addition pushes the weight up to 17.4 ounces, although I doubt you would notice the 0.2 ounces increase in half. In terms of price, both the LCR and LCR X are identical. Ruger also throws in three moon clips as well. So which to pick between the two? If you're new, I suggest you pick the LCR. If you have some time behind the gun, the LCR-X might be a better option. The Taurus 905 series. This snub nose revolver is an affordable option if your budget is tight. There are two options to choose from. You can get it in a matte black oxidized finish or matte stainless steel. The only difference is the look and price tag, which is about a $50 difference. You get five rounds in the cylinder and rubber grips. The 905 also features a transfer bar mechanism to ensure safety, and its 21 ounces of heft make it a very easy carry. Speaking of carrying, there are many holsters for the 905 as well. The Smith & Wesson Performance Center Model 986. The Model 986 is on the pricier side of the list, but it has some features that every other gun on the list does not have. Smith & Wesson is one of the few manufacturers that goes above and beyond and produces beautiful guns that run exceptionally well. You get 2.5 inches of barrel to work with and a titanium cylinder that holds 7 rounds already. The gun has enough capacity to compete with some semi-autos that use single-stack magazines. This revolver is a double single-action gun that features a frame and barrel of stainless steel. That means the gun is also on the heavier side of 31 ounces. You get an adjustable rear sight and a rear ramp front sight. The custom wood grip completes the classic look. The Rock Island AL 9.0 Revolver Rock Island's AL 9.0 Revolver is relatively new to the whole 9mm self-defense revolver. The manufacturer itself has made many fantastic firearms over the years and a lot of people really love their products. What makes it stand out is its ergonomic grip and lightweight. 
The AL 9.0 comes in at just 1.5 pounds heavy, making it a great transitional piece from a polymer framed semi-auto from the likes of Walther and Sig Sauer. It's also a solid piece for those who want a gun that is a little easier on the hands. That means those with small hands or medical issues like carpal tunnel will find this gun very comfortable to use. This classical look resembles a Colt Python. You get six rounds in the cylinder, a four inch barrel, blued finish, and a single double action trigger. The trigger is the only downside here as the double action is smooth with no stacking, but on the long side, which may affect accuracy. The Charter Arms Pitbull. The Pitbull is a stub nose revolver chambered in 9mm and goes for around $500. You get 2.2 inches of barrel to work with, and the cylinder holds 5 rounds. Fully loaded, the Pitbull weighs in at 23 ounces. The Pitbull can be had in single or double action, both in a black nitride and stainless steel finish. If you go for the stainless steel variant, you get a neoprene grip. If black nitride is more your style, you get a rubber grip. If you happen to live in California, then your only legal option would be a stainless steel model. The Pitbull also features a dual coil spring assembly inside the extractor, so rimless loading and unloading are easier if you do not use moon clips. While the 9mm cartridge is not thought of as a revolver cartridge, revolvers offer some benefits that semi-autos just cannot match. The 9mm Luger is the most popular chambering for self-defense thanks to its balance between velocity and recoil. You get 1100 feet per second more than that of the 380 APC and less recoil more than the 45 ACP. 40 Smith & Wesson, and 357 Magnum. It's a well-rounded and versatile cartridge. Not to mention, it is easier to find and cheaper to acquire. What makes loading 9mm into a revolver interesting is the fact that revolvers are often rated for plus P rounds. That extra pressure helps you squeeze out a bit more power from the cartridge. Not to mention, revolvers are inherently more reliable than semi-autos. Revolvers have fewer moving parts, so they are a lot less likely to jam. If a revolver jams, just pull the trigger again and you're good to go. No practice is needed. For semi-autos, you need to put in the time to clear the jam quickly, and you might not have enough time for that. In a tussle, a revolver will never fail you. You see, when you get into a grappling match with your attacker, you usually do not have much time to aim and fire. Your instinct would tell you to push the gun right up against your attacker's torso and pull the trigger because you literally cannot miss at that range. Unfortunately, if you are using a semi-auto pistol, the gun may not fire. Provided sufficient pressure, the slide and barrel will be pushed out of battery and the gun would not fire. And that might be all the chance you get to pull the trigger. For a revolver, you can do the same and the gun would go bang. There you have it, folks. This is my top 7 picks for 9mm revolvers for self-defense. This is just my opinion, so you do not have to agree with everything I said. Of course, I hope that this list has been helpful if you are looking to pick up a 9mm revolver. If you happen to own any of these, tell us about your experience in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.